everybody. This is Analyst Alakazams back with post week five power rankings for the PBO Stargazer Division. I am solo this time, no one here with me. So uh, I think with that, we'll just get into it so that we are, you know, back on track with our power ranking discussions and uh, can get the ball rolling again. All right, coming in at number 14. Uh, with a little bit of a revamped team, I believe the team got revamped again after this, but this is uh, what the team was post-week 5. We have the Clombrook Kyogres, who, uh, in I'm going to go over weeks 4 and 5 in this video, probably. I just think it'd be better overall for the uh, quality of the uh, video, the consistency of at least having most weeks covered in some way. Uh Week three, obviously, we didn't have any uh, coverage for, so uh, I'll just give some on four and five. So the Kyogres lost to uh, the Sunnyside Streamtails in week four, 4-0 four or 0-4, and then they got trounced by the Luscious Low Punnies, 0-6. So um, really, I think uh, it, it's just kind of becoming difficult with Clombrook. They seem to rely on setup a lot. You know, whether it's set up gouging, set up El Creamy, set up King Gambit, it just doesn't seem to really work too often. Uh, they set up with El Creamy against Mug in week four, and then they had like the acid armors up, and then they switched out on uh, Meow Scarada because Meow Scarada has like banded flower trick, but like it was terra poison out creamy like it terra poisoned later in the match so why didn't he terra poison there and you know uh go for like draining kiss or whatever to get health back and you could probably if you were like a max defense calm mindset uh you could probably like live flower trick once it's resisted decently easily and maybe your out creamy could sweep from there maybe um and then in week uh five which is kind of the main week i'm going to talk about in all of these i'm going to talk about the most recently uh, more than week four uh, there's really not much to talk about here though because they just uh they switched a few times around they got some momentum they were doing decent until gouging fire came out and then again they tried to set up with gouging fire um when all of low punnies like set up in pokemon yeah this is just my opinion it's set up in Pokemon, it's really best when you have like either one of the key uh, defensive pieces of the, or like one of the key checks for that set up Pokemon gone already, or at least low. So that way uh, you kind of set up the path so that your Pokemon has an easier uh, way of like sweeping once it's set up. Whether that involves getting up hazards, whether that involves getting some chip with your other guys, like maybe your Scarfer uh, can get some chip earlier on. Uh, but none of that really happened here, and he just started setting up with gouging and uh, Diancie came in, which is a pretty decent gouging check. It Terra Watered, it goes for Diamond Storm, it gets the plus two defense, it starts Calm Minding, and it just literally reverse sweeps because he has no way of dealing with it. Uh, he doesn't really use his Alcremie well to answer it. The Alcremie does have Energy Ball, but uh, he doesn't really you know, bring it out in time. And when he does bring it out, it's kind of too little too late. Uh, King Gambit doesn't get maximum boosts because he brings it out early. I think he has a habit of doing that. So far, just not uh, a, a great season from the Kyogres. Uh, I, they continue to make changes, so they are trying. I think uh, we could potentially see a win from them in the near future. I, I don't doubt that at all. Um, I, I do like the Zapdos Galar pickup. I question having both Gouging Fire and Moltres. They do fulfill kind of different roles, but at the same time, they're both weak to rocks. I don't know if you need to spend so many points on both of them. It's kind of similar to the Rotom Frost Electro situation you've got going on here. I think further changes have happened since this. So um, I'll we'll keep posted on that situation. But so far, you know, they're 0-5. It's not looking too good. All right. Coming in at the number 13 position, we have the Philadelphia Flygons, who uh, lost in week four to the uh, New Jersey Dracos, and then they lost in week five to the Frederick Klefkies. Um, shame that the one week we won't cover, I guess I'll mention it here briefly since it is their one win. They are one and four. They 6-0'd with Bexcalibur against Valiance. 
uh, pretty good 6-0. They did dodge a Thunder Wave to make it happen. Uh, but other than that, they've been struggling to get wins. Uh, the regen core isn't working. Ursaluna Blood Moon isn't really uh, getting to do what it wants to do. Um, was good early on against Orange. Uh, it got burns on Samurai and Garchomp. But uh, once... And the, the Slow King Trick Room set was interesting. You know, I don't necessarily think it was bad in any way. Once the um, Spectrear came out, uh, he kind of flubbed a bit. He started losing a bunch of Pokemon. The Spectrear had a really cool uh, Protect set to stop the Blood Moon so that it could live the Hyper Voice the next turn. And Ursaluna Blood Moon went down, one of the main threats. And everything kind of just uh, collapsed from there. He kept trying to set up. He tried to set up with Bex Caliber, but there was a Feather Dance to Town Plane. He tried to set up on Tinkaton with Iron Moth with Substitute, but it was Encore. He just really couldn't do anything. He just had to start sacking Pokemon to Spectrear. The setup from Orange was superior. The play was superior, and he kind of just... Um, fell apart so to speak uh versus dracos it was really just he had no way of stopping the offensive threats that dracos had uh dracos kind of just because uh, it was a close one but essentially what happened if you watch the game dracos just threw offensive pokemon at him over and over and over again and then the offensive pokemon eventually died but that's after it got one and a half kills probably or maybe two kills and then you know dracos ended up with more pokemon at the end than him so his defensive backbone just wasn't strong enough which you could probably see in the team construction you know, Slow King's probably trying to do a lot of the heavy lifting there. So, uh, I don't hate the team from the Fly Guns. I don't necessarily think the play's been horrible, but it, it's really just not falling his way so far this season. Uh, there hasn't been, like, you know, too much unique prep that's really gotten him the edge in his games so far. Alright, coming in at number 12, uh, a complete unknown. The Garden City Grottles, I have right there the uh, results from week four and five. But those are uh, results of the Sunnyside Screamtails, who are no longer in Stargazer. They uh, voluntarily demoted to the Sunset Division once a spot opened up and this team took over. Uh, the team isn't like the greatest constructed, but uh, that's really because it's what was left. Of what was left, I think this team's like pretty good. You know, you, you're slim pickings. I think they picked the best they could. They got two excellent, excellent Terra Captains in Sinistra and Rotom Fan, in my opinion. I do wish Sinistra had Terra Fairy on it there, maybe. Um, Glow King and Meowskarata, very good uh, top-tier options. Manaphy can be good. It hasn't done much in PBO, uh, but it can be good. Harkonine and uh, Horowark are both, you know, pretty strong Pokemon in their own right. Uh, they could get some shenanigans going on with, uh, you know, Disguise. Uh, I'll be interested to see if Charge Bug ever comes. I'm kind of just talking about the team here, like going over my else of the team, because we haven't seen the player play. It's a complete, you know, unknown, uh, which is exciting. You know, if, if they could turn out to be really, really good. And if they're really, really good, we've got a dangerous new team in the Stargazer division, which, you know, always makes things more entertaining. They are, unfortunately, 1-4. in four. That's kind of why they're so low, even though they're an unknown. It's because if you're one in four, you can't really be super high. But uh, they could theoretically, with you know strong differential and a win out, still make playoffs. So uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. All right, at number eleven, probably the lowest he's ever been in PBO power rankings. Uh, we have the New York Malamars. They lost to the Klefkies, uh 04. They lost to the Agrons, 02. Uh, these are two really strong opponents, you know what I mean? Like top three PVO players probably. But uh, he is one in four. It's really hard to justify being much higher at one in four. Struggling to get wins. It's rain. Rain can sometimes get taken advantage of. Uh, I, I think some of his prep has actually been odd at times. He he brought no rain into Clef Keys when Clef Keys, like uh, water type was Samurai Hisui. Like granted, Clef Keys has uh, Appleton. But Klefkies both doesn't like bringing Appleton, and Appleton's Terra, so it can Terra out of being a Grass type. And if it Terra's out of being a Grass type, uh, Floatzel really like destroys Klefkies in my opinion. So um, that was uh, unfortunate. Just you know, the teams that the two teams that showed up, uh, probably Standard Rain would have been better than what ended up coming. Uh, he did like lose. Uh, 
Fortress and basically torn very early, or not, he lost Avalug and torn very early to a Fortress thanks to Thunder Wave and Flash Cannon, which was really unfortunate. It was just really great prep by Orange. Um, I, I do think he faced Flash Cannon Fortress in Mox, so not scouting for it at all is, you know, just an unfortunate situation to uh, come into. Against Abbotsford, he fared uh, better early on. Iron Crown was getting chip, you know, things were going well. Everything was getting low. Dragapult had to take a few Grassy Glides. But then it kind of all collapsed when uh, Pelipper gets caught in a Magma Storm and then gets outsped by a, a nicely sped crept Heatran from Abbotsford and Power Gemmed and dies and then Rain disappears the same turn. It's kind of like a disastrous sequence of Rain turns. Floatzel no longer outspeeds Dragapult and Dragapult because, you know, Arcaladon's kind of low, uh, Spikes are up, Rillaboom's dead, uh, Gastrodon's dead. Floor just didn't come. I really think Floor just should have come to this game because Drag. If if any mocks happened at all, I think he should have seen that Dragapult like Spax was really really bad like dangerous into him and Floor just like Max Spideff Floor just should have come in response to that. Because um, I, I did mocks with Abbotsford a little bit and I ended up bringing Max Spideff Floor just just for Dragapult because it was so dangerous. Um, I, I think it just comes to each week it comes down to a few key plays Pelipper going down you know turn one against uh buff keys it's just uh some key positioning plays just aren't going his way it, it, weather might be cursed in pbo you have to play really well with weather because you know one turn your Pelipper goes down as we saw against abbotsford and all of a sudden everything goes askew when things were kind of in your favor for a bit and uh, it, it just, it just, it's unfortunate that it's kind of come to this. He's one in four. He has a good differential because one of those losses is actually a tie forfeit, so he got plus two for that. Uh, I, we'll see if he can come back and avoid relegation or maybe even make playoffs. He could make playoffs if he wins out. He has the differential for it. I think he could win out. Uh, his schedule is tough but doable, so uh, we'll just have to see. All right. Coming in at number 10, we have the Vancouver Valiants, who lost to the Abbotsford Agrons uh, 3 and then beat the Norwalk uh, Noiverns the next week 2-0. So pretty much he lost to set up Rhydon. It should have been, uh, for two weeks now, it should have been Roar Vaporeon. That's kind of on me too, because I help him prep. I keep bringing a luring voice, but they keep breaking out of confusion or never getting hit, which is, you know, a little unlucky, but still be safe. It should be Roar. Um, right, so really Valiance is struggling versus setup. He's gotten swept thrice now. All three of his losses are sweeps to a Bax Caliber, to a Comfey, and to a Rhydon. Um, he st struggled to stop the Rhydon from setting up. The Rhydon got a light screen from Dragapult, which is, you know, really good support. And then he ended up having to sack his whole team in order for the light screen to go away so that Kiram could come out and kill the Rhydon. Uh, so it, it, it was just really unfortunate, really bad situation all around. Uh, against Grimmsnarl, or against Norwalk, he did really, really, uh, good. Banded Grimmsnarl, good idea into such a fat team. It lets him, you know, just, uh, spam fairy or dark moves and, uh, do really good chunks to Pokemon that, uh, would typically, like, unaware Pokemon, uh, you know, they stop setup, but they can't stop banded damage. Uh, Ape showed it was really, really good. It farmed uh, Hydrapple for uh, Rage Fist Boost, and then it would just come in, get a kill. Valiant would come in. Valiant would uh, click Moonblast, but uh, AV Treads would come in, and then he would have to switch out in response, and then Ape would come in again and get a kill. Uh, in order for Norwalk to win this game, he had to predict uh, Treads probably a cycle earlier and click Aura Sphere. Uh, that way he'd have one more sack, and maybe he had a chance. But uh, he didn't. He did eventually, you know, get the turn right. But uh, so far, v Vancouver, I don't know if they're playing, like, great. I think the team is, like, decent. I, I do think its defensive uh, backbone isn't the strongest. Uh, he did abuse Glamora correctly against Claude's, against uh, Norwalk and the Claude Zire. Uh, once he realized that he had no removal, which was really, really smart. Uh, you know, got up all the hazards and he couldn't really do anything right now kiram and volcarona two really high point value mons are kind of struggling to show their worth they don't have a ton of kills they're not really doing much it's really annihilate annihilate but grim snarl is pretty good so far uh glamora those are really kind of the mvps of this team so far so we'll just kind of have to see where he takes it from here i i don't think he's like played his greatest 
like the best he could so far, obviously against, you know, Beck's caliber. That week was really unfortunate. Having Phillies one win be a 6-0 against you makes your playoff hopes like really, really hard because your differential becomes so bad. So like even if he breaks even and goes four and four, his differential is probably not going to be good enough to make playoffs. So he probably has to win out to make playoffs. It's it's not a super great situation, but uh, I think with the right play, it could be navigated. And number nine, uh, probably the most interesting team and the most interesting results so far uh, this season, the New Jersey Dracos. They continue to, you know, battle it out with like mid-tier teams. They beat Flygons 2-0, they lose to Scizors 0-1. It's just like th that six to eight range is probably where Draco is going to end up. He's nine right now just because he's two and three and he, you know, he lost that last game. Um, everything is really close because the, the team's so offensive. Uh, he kind of just blitzed Flygons down with pure offense and it worked, you know, expanding force, Dio speed, Sneasler was there. Um, it, it, it just, it, and uh, Crocodile was there, I believe. He's just going, like, as much damage as possible. Uh, for the game against Scizors, he got crit on Tarapagos, which was really unfortunate because the game was super close, and he, uh, based on the odds, could probably have won if he, you know, lived that, even if he was low and killed Ogre Pond, because he'd be up a Pokemon uh, compared to Scizors, compared to what the uh, game ended up being. Uh, Specs Electrode was a good idea because Scizors has a really bad ground. It was Doug Trio. I believe he's changed it now, but it was Doug Trio. So, you know, Specs Electric, you're firing off electric moves pretty much for free. Uh, I, really the key of the Scizors game and kind of the, the reason he's down here a bit. Well, one, one, the major reason he's down here is I think the team construction is going to fail him in the end because it's so offensive. He has no defensive backbone and he'll kind of break under any pressure. But uh, one of the major play reasons is keeping Dio speed, like light screens, rocks Dio speed into the end game. It, it, it's just bad mismanagement of late game planning. You, you got a sack. That's one of your earliest sacks. Maybe you could have kept a, a, something over it. Uh, or you could have let it and just let it die eventually to go for whatever you were trying to sweep with. Uh, because it can't do anything. As we saw, it literally had no moves to clean up the game with. If it just had a move to hit, he probably could have won this game. Uh, he lost Primarina on a prediction. It was just a good prediction from Scizors. I wouldn't necessarily say it was a bad play from Dracos. Overall, you know, he's playing fine. He's just duking it out in the middle of, like, the division. He, he He's, like, a, a, a good, consistent, like, in the in the 6 to 10 range. That kind of area, I feel. And I think that's probably where he's going to stay unless uh, something drastic changes. All right. Up next, we have the Charleston Chesnots, who have gotten two wins these past two seasons after starting 0-3. They beat the Scizors, and they beat the uh, Sunnyside Screamtails, now Grottles. That's why that says Grottles. Um, so, good games from Rock Dusk. You know, Rock Dusk really cleaned up uh, these games. Uh, Scizors, I thought he was actually losing this game uh, for the beginning-ish portion of it. And then Weezing Galar comes in, and Scizors kind of just collapses in and has to sack like three pokemon so you know, i think that's like bad team prep from scissors if i have to guess or bad play if he actually had something for it um but it, it was good team prep from charleston he recognized it and he let wheezing do its thing and then like rock could clean up late game um i like the use of uh, dragology so far in his games i think he's using dragology really well uh he what he led bronzong kind of weird versus scissors a weird set with like setup i think leading setup is almost always bad it usually doesn't work in my opinion um it, it can work if it's like really strong setup but it was like a weird calm mind bronzong i didn't fully understand exactly what it was for um against scream tales uh really good you know wo chien showing uh Wo Chien kind of just, you know, chipped everything down, got a kill on Ectodrill, I think, early on. Everything was chipped because of it. Eventually it dies. But he was in the commander seat that whole game versus Mug until he gets unlucky. He misses a move, I think. I think it was Pyro Ball on Glaceon. And he uh, loses Glaceon for it. Or he loses Cinderace for it. And he gets unlucky another time against Mug. And he still finds a way to win thanks to Lycanroc Dusk. Lycanroc Dusk is doing a pretty good job at, you know, uh, getting him out of tough situations and also helping clean up games. And I think Miss Magius is also doing pretty good this season. So overall, you know, Charles in the past two weeks really built himself up, showed how this new team works. 
uh, I, I, he's trending in the positive direction for sure. Uh, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I think he won both these games, uh, ha not handily, because obviously they're both close, but I, he was in control the whole time. I, I didn't feel like he was going to lose, I guess is the best way I could put it, uh, especially w w once Weezing Galar came out against Scizors. Speaking of Scizors, at number seven, we have the Pittsburgh Scizors, who had a bit of a team revamp after uh, Electrode hit, uh, came, Terra Electric. Uh, that must have been kind of scary. That's why they finally got like a real ground, picked up uh, Landorus Therian. Um, so they lost to the Chestnuts 2 which, you know, they're higher than Chestnuts. You might think that's kind of weird, but they are uh, three and two. So uh, that's kind of a part of a reason why. Uh, they beat Dracos 1-0. Uh, I, I think the team prep planning against Chesnots was kind of odd because Weezing Galar, I mean, he did miss a hypnosis, but Weezing Galar kind of just sat there and, you know, beat him up for a bit. I, it got like two and a half kills or something, if I remember correctly. Uh, he used Rotom H with Pain Split really well against Crook. I was pretty impressed with how that was going. Uh, he did need a crit versus Crook, which, you know, it, it is a high crit move. So, you know, what do you really think of that? I don't think it was really like that, you know, appalling or anything. I think he played pretty good against Crook overall. I don't really have too many complaints. Um, I think he's been using Dark Ride pretty well. I think now that Come Face finally Terra, which I really like, uh, I think he could use that really well. I think having, you know, I, I don't love some of the team changes. I think Bramble Gast is, I had it in season four. I don't think it's the best Pokemon ever. I'm not the biggest uh, Okidogi Lover or Latias or uh, non Terra Registeel. I do like Landorus Therian. I think Glaceon's pretty good. Uh, we'll just have to see kind of how they mesh, how they do. Because, you know, I think Latias could be good. I know Okidogi, like, it's not my play style, but I know, like, some people really like Okidogi. Uh, we'll just have to see how he does. I am really sad that he dropped uh, Petrarch. That was really, really sad for me. I, I think Petron's really good. Someone should probably go out and pick it up. Um, but overall, I, I think he's playing pretty decent. Again, kind of like Draco's. He's he's beating. He's in the six to ten range always, beating around, trying to get a playoff spot. Uh, kind of in the middle of the pack. All right, at number six, maybe somewhat controversially. Uh, the Golden State Durants, I think I had this team at either one or two at the very beginning of the season, and they continue to slip because they continue to lose. Um, I do think they're not playing horribly. It's kind of hard to evaluate these games, in my opinion, because I don't think like anything uh, egregious is going on from a prep or play standpoint. He just loses. Um, he lost the low punnies. He did beat Embors, which was a very good win. That's why he's still up here, even at two and three. That's why he's at six. I do really like the team. You know, against Embors, he got the chip with Rabombi. He got the chip with Tusk, which allowed Greninja to come in and kind of pop off with Battle Bond, which, you know, opens up Latios. Uh, he's been really liking Calmine Latios. It's a good set. Uh, he used it against both of these teams, and it did really well against both of them. Low Punnies and Embors, neither really had a answer uh, for it. Uh, against Low Punnies, you know, it was a loss. So what did he do wrong? Uh, he lost to a late-game Blaziken more than anything. So Reverum kind of just sat and, like, lost to Diancie. It didn't actually get to do much in that game. I think if Terra Water Reverum, you know, stayed around, maybe it could have been a semi-answer to that special Blaziken, taking a hit and killed it or something. Um, but I, uh, we, we can't say for sure, you know. I, I, I think he's, you know, he's, he, he's a strong player. I don't think his play is bad, but the results so far have been mixed. He's, he's two and three. It's just kind of hard to fully evaluate uh, exactly what's going on here, in my opinion. Uh, you know, the the, the low punnies uh, were getting, you know, decent positioning on them early, but then they kind of got some decent positioning back. It was only a 1-0 loss. That was a really close game. So I feel like a lot of their games are really close, and they're just kind of... Like, they could very theoretically be like four and one right now, you know, that Abbotsford game, that low punny game. So it, it's hard for me to put them like lower. That's why they're here at six, despite being two and three. But it's really hard to put them higher because of that record. He's just got to find a way to kind of win these games. He, he, he's he's got to find a way to, uh, you know, ultimately pull it out. All right. With that, we move on to the team at number five, the Norwalk Noiverns. So uh, the Neuverns beat 
the Moochin Embors 4-0, and then lost to the Vancouver Valiants 0-2. So they got a very funny Minior sweep against Embors. They kind of caused it themselves. They switched, um, uh, 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 they messed around with the uh, Minior a little bit, in my opinion, and they also lost two Pokemon immediately to Skeledurge, which kind of opened up Minior the ability to sweep. Um, they played really, really pa or passive against Valiance, in my opinion. They kind of fed Annihilate Rage Fist Boost with Hydrapple, just clicking attacking moves. Um, he really he really only got Differential on Valiance, who probably should have won, like 5-0, through Iron Valiant after he, you know, finally correctly predicted Aura Sphere on Treads because he was Specs, he had to predict one turn. He finally got that right. Uh, but it was a little too little too late because the Toxic was up and he continued to take Chip. Uh, he probably could have switched Claude Zire out on Annihilate so that uh, the Toxic Specs could go away. And then maybe uh, Iron Valiant could have actually like swept or something. Because he really didn't have a great uh, Moonblast answer to Iron Valiant. Uh, but uh, really it was just Annihilate kind of a going crazy picking things off plus the hazards from glamora were also really annoying for him because he had no hazard removal this team's hazard removal is really bleak it's hit him on top overall it seems like norwalk's kind of just inconsistent the team is you know decent it's got the four fat plus metagross plus the dawn plus iron valiant for damage uh mini or has also seemed to become a staple a favorite of noivern's he brings it, it seems like every week now ever since he got the sweep um i i think you know this is like he, he's playing pretty decent pretty good I, I i trust that he can win a lot of these weeks uh but i i do feel maybe we're seeing a little bit of slippage he is three and two so uh he could very well you know make playoffs and uh you know do well in playoffs i i, I don't hate the team you know volbeat's here i do really like volbeat he really can't get set up on two one aware plus uh ditto plus Volby, so he's he's a an interesting player for sure i i think you know the mini or sweep was very impressive even uh i i, I thought it was quite cool uh and he is sitting at uh five, five right now all right at number four i'm kind of uh separating here i think these top four are like uh, the really like top four but uh it's probably like this is tier two solo is the moochin embors and then tier one is the other three if i had to be honest about it so he did lose these last two weeks after starting three and oh um he was swept by a mini or he played pretty bad around it and he sacked two pokemon two dirge early the mini or like uh probably could have died if i'm remembering correctly it's just he kind of like i think switched poorly or he didn't sub enough with uh roaring moon he kind of got a little greedy in my opinion uh he had no answer for calm mind lottie against durance either he kind of just had to sack pokemon and his walls got low really early that game his zapdos and skarmory he clicked rock slide on uh great tusk and let his skarm get low which was unfortunate uh it kind of opened up greninja to uh, get a battle bomb boost and start doing some real major damage uh he he brings some cool sets uh, sometimes and like, like, like I, I really appreciate his team building and i think that they work a lot i think we're kind of seeing these past two weeks the composition issues of the team how the walls can sometimes get overwhelmed and then he really has no answers uh in the late game for some of the top tier threats that the opponent are bringing uh overall you know emboards is a very strong player in my opinion i do think you know maybe zangus is getting popped a little too early in these games and then just dying, and then it kind of, uh, like, it kind of, like, leaves a slot, uh, a, a very dangerous slot open for the, uh, opponent to, uh, get an opening, uh, when Zangus is dead, because then you're, you're kind of playing, like, uh, I think late Zangus should be a late game sweeper, so it's kind of, like, suboptimal positioning for the Pokemon. Um... Yeah, I, I I think Keldeo is being played pretty good here. Uh, you know, it, it was a it was a Revenger against Durant. It did that pretty well. If he got a crit on the Thunderous Therian, maybe he could have won that game. Uh, overall, it, it, it's an interesting position for sure. I do think they're good. 
Uh, I think they'll make playoffs pretty pretty comfortably. We'll just have to see from now on uh, where they go after these back-to-back -back losses. Right, at number three, the Abbotsford Agrons, who are 4-1 and one now. They beat Valiant. They beat Malamars. Uh, they, they, they crushed Valiant with Double Dance Rhydon. They lost two Pokemon. Uh, not early, but, you know, relatively soon. And then Rhydon came in, and again, it was a Luring Voice Vaporeon. Again, that's kind of my bad. It, it, sh it really should be Roar or Haze. And then I think uh, Valance would have had a much better shot if it was. But he came in, he set up, and then uh, the light screen support from Dragapult, really smart, really good idea. It forced uh, Valance to sack a few Pokemon to get rid of the light screen so Kiram could finally kill it. And at that point, you know, Clefable just comes in and cleans the game because Kiram is locked into Draco Meteor in order to kill Rhydon. So that, that's really the story of that game is just Rhydon kind of went crazy uh, with Dragapult support. It was a, a really good situation for him. Uh, against Za, against the Malamars, he, 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 you know, Electrode got chipped early. Glasgow got chipped early thanks to Crown. Dragapult got chipped early thanks to Rillaboom. It really didn't look like it was going his way. But he kind of, uh, if you look at it, kind of clears the way for Dragapult late game by, you know, getting Dra uh, Gastrodon basically to being a sack with Draco Meteor. Gets Rillaboom really low. Another Pokemon that could potentially, if it's a Salt Vest, maybe could potentially hit take a hit from Dragapult. And then finally, you know, the, the Cherry on top. On the turn where Rain ends, he has a Heatran that's speed crep for Pelipper correctly. Like probably a max speed Pelipper with Power Gem. It one hit KOs Pelipper who's trapped by Magma Storm. And it kills it. Rain ends. Uh, Dragapult outspeeds everything. And at that point, you know, with the Spike support from Gliscor... Everything kind of just came together perfectly in the end game. Really smart, uh, you know, g game uh, awareness to have everything set up correctly for Dragapult to kind of clean at the end there from Agron's. Uh, he's he's playing well. He's he's uh, all, his games are you know relatively close just because he sometimes loses some mons early on, but uh, it, it's all in favor of his vision of the end game. And it's working right now. It's working really well. Uh, I, I, I've been pretty impressed with, you know, him, him executing the vision he has for how the game should go. All right. At number two, a team that is uh, 5-0, oh, one of two teams that are 5-0, and oh, we have the Luscious Low Punnies, who beat Durant's 1-0 oh, and the Clumber Kyogre's 6-0. Oh. They used Blaziken really well late, uh, positioning again kind of like uh abbotsford last game uh they uh positioned themselves correctly with blaziken and got the chip they needed so that blaziken could win in the end game had to hit a focus blast but you know that's more likely than not uh so their you know exchanges they're pivoting really early on against durant that allowed them to kill great tusk early was really really good uh, their Raikou got crit, which was a little unfortunate. Her Raikou got crit. Um, they struggled against Calm Mind Latios. Again, they lost like two Pokemon to it. Had to sack an Emirates, had to sack Golden Go because they had Shadow Ball. Um, which was, you know, unfortunate. Maybe a little bit of, of press prep or either team mismanagement that you have no answer for it other than losing two Pokemon. I don't really see a way to beat it on this team. So it's probably more so just the, the way the team's built. But still managed to win. Still, uh, you know, it, it was the closest game Lopunis has had against Durant. Had, uh, she, she's really good at positioning Blaziken to clean up at the end game. She's done it multiple times now. It's one of her key ways of winning a game. And then against Kyogres, uh, she, you know, switched around a few times. And then Gouging Fire came in. She brought in Diancy, who's, you know, universally a pretty good check, especially once it Terra Waters. Uh, to Gouging Fire, he tries to set up. She, you know, uh, Diamond Storms right back, gets the defense boost, starts setting up, and it's game over. Uh, kind of just beat up on one of the lower-ranked teams in the division. But, you know, still a really good, really impressive showing from her. Uh, I've been pretty impressed with her ability to kind of just, you know, cruise through teams right now. Uh, everything is, uh, other than obviously that Durant game, which I think was really close, everything's kind of just gone her way in all the games she played. Uh, it, it, it's really, you know, she, she has a game plan and she executes it, uh, to perfection. And, uh, it, it's really been, uh, quite a spectacle to see how, you know, she just wins these games so handily, but she is not at number one. 
that would be the Frederick Klefkies, who beat the New York Malamars 4-0 in Week 4 and the Philadelphia Flygons 3-0 in Week 5 to uh, move up to 5-0 on the season. And uh, Klefkies is just, you know, playing really, really good with a really good team right now. And with really creative, really nice sets. So, for example, against Malamars, Flash Cannon to one-hit KO Avalug on the Fortress, and then T-Wave right after to neutralize Torn T, which allows the Ceaseless Edger to come in and get the spikes up. Just perfect positioning, perfect early game to essentially make the game end right there. And then a Differential Saver and a really good plan with Garchomp with, you know, Rough Skin and Endure to make Rillaboom take extra chip and then eventually die. Uh, Spectre coming in on the explosion. It was probably a rapid spin block, but still really good. It's just, it, he seemed to get every play right that game. And it, it was just a, a spectacular showing from him. Uh, really, really great. Uh, and with some really cool, unique sets as well. And then against Flygons, kind of an extension of that. Uh, started off bad. Uh, Rotom Mo was getting its burns off on Garchomp on Samurai. But a great bounce back when Spectre comes in. Uh, Ursuline and Blood Moon was looking so menacing, especially under Trick Room. But he had the Protect tech on Spectre to block the Blood Moon, so he lived Hyper Voice and killed Ursuline and Blood Moon. It was huge. It was a really, really cool idea, really cool tech to bring. And then that let Spectre kind of just run rampant across the Phillies team. Philly ended up having to sack two or three Pokemon, and the game was kind of blown wide open from there. Philly tried to set up with Iron Moth through Substitute or Bax Caliber, but he had answers for that too through a really cool, unique Talent Flame set with uh, Feather Dance, which worked to perfection. And then obviously Encore Tinkaton, he just uh, had an answer for everything Philly had wanted to do after that, and it stopped him in his tracks and basically told him, "No, you can't do that." It, it, it seems like he's kind of you know foreseeing exactly what he needs to do each week. It's going exactly how he wants it to go. He's making all the right plays. He's in his element right now. His prep is really good. It's really unique, and it's working. It's excellent. His play so far is really good, even if there's, like, one misplay here or there. Uh, it still uh, ends up working out for him just because he uh, has such a strong team as well. Uh, the, the, the team is really, really good. You know, Ceaseless Edger is doing really good. Spectre is doing really good. Iron Hands is showing out. Even Fortress, you know, is getting an exhibition game, a Pokemon that I don't really like. Uh, I think Quillfish's Sui is proving that it's a really good Pokemon, which I have always believed. And I, right now, Orange is just in his element, doing uh, basically everything he can to show that he is a top contender in the league. All right. And with that, Thank you for watching this week Power Rankings. I am the analyst Ella Kazams. Peace out.